what up guys welcome to lunatic froggy today we're gonna watch part two of will the trail um we're gonna watch his video my traumatic experience as a child as you can see here um so let's go ahead and get it started I said start as you know we put it on part uh, 1.25 speed oh well oh, I'm sorry I'm sorry it's okay to cry honey especially when you're talking about tragedies It's just not fair. I, I didn't I didn't deserve this. No, you didn't. I didn't deserve this. My sister didn't deserve this. Amen to that. That's what caused me to lie a lot of the times. Well, yeah. It got me into the habit of lying trouble. because uh I, I didn't want it to hit me and hurt me. Whatever little things I did, I would lie to get my to, to save myself from getting abused from getting screamed in my face from getting from him hitting me but it was a really bad habit that I uh... a lot of people that have traumatic experiences like Will when um, they get caught lying they do tend to make it so they're, they're not I mean they lie but it's not like I'm lying to uh, just get away with it. It's I'm lying because I don't want my ass tore up again. That, that that was caused by the abuse. The problem was it only made him angrier and it caused me to get into more trouble at school. So this is a lesson to all you parents out there. What causes your kids to lie to you is us is um you being abusive towards them for what they for little things like for if they make a mistake don't go screaming at them don't go hitting them don't make them cry exactly here's an example because um imagine you're a teacher at school and then encouraging one of your students to uh, tell the truth and then the big red flag would be the student would say, uh, if, if I do that, my father or my mother would get really mad and then he'll hit, they'll hit me. And then that'll be a, that, that's, that's a big red flag right there. Fuck yeah. That's the, one of the main causes of um, children to, to grow up to be. But at the same point in time, uh, like I totally understand what you just said, that parent, uh, teachers really should pay attention but then you got kids who, like, don't get abused, don't get hit. And in order to get out of doing stuff, they'll be like, but, but my parents will hit me. My kid. You know, and it's not the truth. So, I mean, there's a catch-22, but I always definitely check into it no matter what. Be pathological liars. A, a lot of the times. This is one of the big causes of it. It took me a very long time to get out of this habit. To know better. It took me a very long time. Because. Uh, it At least 10 years ago. It was. Uh. It was a huge, like, huge pressure to get me to open up, like, be truthful. Because I was so used to being scared about, um... Everything. Uh, getting screamed at. Being what you really should do abused. as a parent... Just be, like, um... Well, um... For example, if your child does something pretty stupid, like got in trouble or something... My child But is... then if your child confesses about what he, he or she did and then um, 
what you really should do is like be like, well, um, I was going to make you have no TV for a week, but since you, but since you were honest with me, since you told me the truth, I'm going to make your punishment less harsh. You, you're going to have no TV or no internet for, for three days, but I'm proud of you. For um, well, uh, taking away that stuff, like the TV and whatnot, it should be like a day, no matter what, because of the simple fact that when you take away, um, things for such an extended long period of time, eventually they forget why they got it taken away and sooner or later they're just like well all my shit's gonna get taken away and i'm just gonna do what i want and i learned that in parenting class so a week's a little harsh but you could be like well i was gonna you know tell you no tv for the rest of the day but because you told me the truth no tv for half the day or um Yeah, it all depends on their age limit. Like, telling my kid no TV for four days, he's going to be like, okay. No internet for four days, okay. And then he's just going to annoy the fuck out of you. <laughs> then you send him outside. <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't go outside. Go outside. You're not allowed in the house till slide out. <laughs> for telling me the truth. Now back to the way my father treated me a lot, of, most of the time. It's like he was angry about the way I was. He was angry at the, the way he abused me. It was like he didn't want me, like he didn't love me. He says he does to this day, but the way he abused me, it's as if he, he doesn't love me. I felt like he didn't love me. Like, if he truly cared about me, If you truly loved me as, as your son, you, you wouldn't have done all this to me. Exactly, he wouldn't have. I will tell you that a lot of parents don't... That's the biggest issue with uh, borderline personality disorder. Know how to show love. And so my biggest regret to this day is I, I keep saying to my... Yelling at myself, why didn't I speak up? To the, te to the teachers or whoever I trusted. Why didn't I tell anybody about this when I had the chance? Even though I was told not to. Why? Because if I did, I would have been put in foster care. I would have gotten the, uh, the counseling, the care I truly deserved, I truly needed as a kid, like to really help me heal. But when I was still a child, I would have been safe from this abuse. But to this day, this inner child inside of me is still helpless, is still scared, wounded. I hate being like this. I hate it. I'm sick of it. It's hard getting over it. I'm almost 40 and still have That's why I wanted to hard time. commit suicide over 13 years ago. I, I wanted to uh, get my father's gun and and sh and shoot myself in, in, in right here in the head. And I wanted to write a suicide note. I, I, uh, I had it all planned out and everything. I wanted to uh, write down my suicide note. Dad, you see what you did to me? You caused me to do this. I was God's gift to you, but since you abused your gift from God, you, you, you need to have it taken away. Here is your gun in my cold, dead hand. I hope you suffer for the rest of your life for what you did to me. Looking at my cold, dead body with, with my head split wide open from the projectile, my brains all, and blood and brains all over the walls in my room, I hope that scars you for life.
That's what I wanted to write my suicide note. See, I'm glad you didn't do it. I had a, my daughter had a friend that did do it. And it still traumatizes my daughter to this day. So I'm glad you didn't do it. There is love and help for you. And just remember, you are not your father. You are an amazing man. And at the end of the day, you're getting the help that you need to get over all the abuse and trauma that your parents caused. And I say parents as in parents. So, I get you, honey. I know that you're really having a hard time. But just know... We love you, and we're glad you didn't do that. I want him to suffer. I want I want him to. Uh, I want him to punish himself for what he did. But I give myself credit. I I, I got strong. I I held on. I I'm still holding on to this day. Does these flashbacks they occur? But it's under control when I take my medication. Well, since I, re I revealed my traumatic, traumatic experiences as in good enough detail as I could, what should I do now? Like, should I make a new GoFundMe, like, to help me buy a house? Like, should, should, should I make a new one? What should I do? Because I really need a change in environment to really help with the healing process. Because that's what I, I, I've researched and it says a change in environment, permanent change in environment is what would help with the healing process. Should I make a new GoFundMe account? Because I feel like a huge majority of people didn't want to help, like they didn't care. You tell me in the comment section, what should I do? It's like I'm working a job. I just um, Go on Craigslist. A lot of times you can find houses for cheap. Yeah, they might need work, but... I have always said that the more work you put into your house, the more love you're going to give your house. Um, but, yeah, go on Craigslist and see if you can find a house that they're willing to work with you so you can get into a better situation than what you're in. Just reach a thousand subscribers, like, I'm going to try to make money, but the, the way my mentality is, my, con health, my mental health condition, it, the way it is right now, I really think it should be done as soon as possible. What should I do? Because New York State is making it very difficult for somebody, especially like me, somebody like me, very difficult. <sighs> what should I do? Keep holding All right, so uh, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys... Yeah, that was Will the Trail. Go show this man some love. He's a really good dude. Okay. He had some serious issues happen to him in his childhood. But please remember, especially Will, what happens in your childhood does not define who you are today. What happens in your life today defines who you are today. As everybody knows, I've been going on a healing journey. And I think my uncle passing really kind of set, set it back a little bit because... Yeah. But, um... In that healing journey, I have had to understand that I can't change what happened to me in my past. All I can do is live for a better future. Um, and again, go check, well, go check out uh, Craigslist. You might be able to find somebody willing to work for you. Alright guys, I'm going to end it here. I love you. Go watch the full episode, or the full video. Will, I love you and I hope you're holding on strong. Be amazing. Love y'all. Bye.